Hi and welcome to the fifth category of mini program challenges. In this category, we are going to have nine questions for strings. First things first, you are seeing the timestamp for this lecture for this category, and I'm going to give you five seconds in order to just take a look at it. Let's move on to the first question. Uh, the first question says, arrange uh, string characters such, as, such that lowercase letters should come first. So we have a string of Jason, right? Uh, go ahead, pause the video, and you're going to see my solution after three seconds. Well, how is the solution? I'm sure you did great. Now, we have our string, which was Jason right and I'm gonna say lower I'm gonna create an empty list and I'm gonna create an upper empty list as well I'm gonna say for character in string first let's iterate over it now we need to check if it is lower we need to append it to the lower list if it is um, upper we need to append it to the upper list and if it is uppercase so I'm gonna say if char dot is lower that's the function if it is lower case what do i want to do with that i want to grab that lower list and i'm going to append to it that character that char that character else what does else mean else means that it is not lower it is upper so i'm going to say upper grab the upper list and we're going to append to it the character so that's it here. I'm going to say sorted uh, string. Let's set it equal to, I'm going to provide an empty quote here. And I'm going to say dot join lower plus upper. So first comes the lower, then comes the upper. And we join them uh, by an empty string. Basically, we want to create a string out of them. So let's go ahead and let's run this. I'm going to say... I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to provide it uh, with sorted string. Let's run that. And we got Sanjay. Very cool. That's it for the first question. Moving on to the second question. The second question says that uh, count all lowercase, uppercase digits and special symbols from a given list. For you, the given list is stir. Uh, it's there is Halali by name embedded in there. So if we just grab all lowercase and uppercase, and we are gonna count all of those within the string. So pause the video, attempt the challenge, and you're gonna see my solution after three seconds. Well, how was the challenge? I'm sure you did great. Now uh, let's go ahead and let's just dive right in. We need to check for um, all of these symbols, uppercase, lowercase, and we need to count them, right? So I'm going to say find, find digit, digit, character, and then symbols. So I'm going to say find digits, characters, and then symbols, right? And we are going to have an input string, and I'm just going to say stir. Now, for the character count, we have this variable. For the digit count, we have this variable. For the symbol count, symbol count, we have this variable. Now I'm going to say for char in uh, string, the input string, the string that we are going to input in here. Now, let's check for it, right? If Okay, let's come down. If char dot is lower, if it is lower, what does that mean? It means that um, it is lowercase or if it is uppercase. Let me just provide it there. Or uh, char dot is upper. So this is going to check for it if it is lowercase and if it is uppercase. So... If it is lowercase, if it is uppercase, it is a character. Characters are lowercase and uppercase. So we are going to add to the count of the char count variable. Uh, 
So I'm going to say char count. I'm going to use the augmented assignment operator, and I'm going to say add one in each iteration. Elif. Now you are getting the idea, right? We are checking for different conditions. Is numeric? Is is it numeric? Is numeric? If it is numeric, then we are going to grab the digit, not sigit, digit, just provide a space, digit count, and using the augmented assignment operator, we are going to add one. Else, it means it is a symbol, right? So symbol, symbol count is going to go up by one. That's it. After that, we are going to get, get out of the for loop. I'm going to save that so you can see the indentation clearly. And I'm going to say print uh, using a formatted string. I'm going to say character count. Uh, this is going to be the char count. And then I'm going to move on. I'm going to say digit count. Let's grab the digit count. And finally, we have, um, what was the last one? Symbol count. Symbol count. And this is going to be symbol count. Just save it. There we go. Now, let's call this function. I'm going to say, this is our string. Our string is right here. So, let's just copy that and put it, put it right here. Oops. Just copy it completely, put it right here. So this is our input string, and I'm going to say print. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to call this function no more print statements. So I'm going to say find digits, charge symbols, and we are going to pass in the string that we have. Let's go ahead and let's run it. There we go. So it says character count six, digits count uh, digit count or digits. I'm just going to say digit. Uh, three and symbol count four. So we have one, then two, three. Uh, this is four, L, five, and six. So we have six, that, three digits. So we have one, so we have two, six, and five, three digits, four symbols. That's one, two there. That's three and four there. That's it for question number two. It was a longer one. Let's move on to question number three. Uh, question number three says that find all occurrences of is in a given string, ignoring the case. So if is is lowercase or if it is uppercase, we don't care. Just find its occurrences. So go ahead, pause the video. You're going to see my solution after three seconds. Okie dokie. I don't know why I said that. So we have this string. So let me just go ahead and first copy that and put it right here. Now within this uh, string, now finding is within a string that is just a specific example, specific thing that you need to accomplish. You can do this on any string and you can find any letter or character or word that you want. This is just an example, right? I'm going to say sub uh, string. The thing that I'm looking for is is. And then I'm going to create a temporary string. And I'm going to grab the, um, the string that I have. And I'm going to lowercase it. I'm just going to call dot lower. Now our string itself, the input string, it has been lowercased. So when I say is, I'm looking for is, lowercase is. Everything is lowercase, so I can find as many occurrences as there are. Now let's count it. I'm going to say temporary string dot count. And I'm going to grab the substring. Now, just make sure that the substring is lowercase as well. So I'm just going to say lowercase. And then for, for the final part, let's print the count. The count says four. So we have one, two, and then we have three. And then we have four uh, is within this his. But I'm going to change this his to her just to make sure there are no confusions along the way. So if I come down here, it says three. So we got one is, 
two, and this is the third one. That's it for question number three. Let's move on to question number four. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on it. Uh, the question, question number four says, given an input string, count all occurrences of all characters within a string. All occurrences of all characters. So, you know what that means. Uh, go ahead, pause the video, and you're going to see my solution after three seconds. Well, how was the challenge? I'm sure you did great. Now, here we have this uh, string. It is a lemon malt. And I'm just going to copy this string. I'm going to put it right here. So, I'm going to say count... I'm going to create a dictionary because with dictionaries, we have keys and values. The keys are going to be the uh, characters or letters. The values are going to be their number of repetitions. And I'm going to initialize an empty dictionary. So for char in stir, we are going to count those, right? So I'm going to say stir.count and I'm going to pass in the char right there, right? And then I'm going to grab the count dictionary uh, and the key is going to be the character, each character that we got, and the count is going to be the value for that character. Let's print our count dictionary and let's take a look at it. So what do we have here? So you can see we have one, uh, and it is, uh, it is not case, um, it's case sensitive, right? So we have one L here. And then there is another L right here. Both of them are L. So what you could do is you could grab the string and you could call dot lower on it before passing it there. Like a pre-processing step. But I'm going to leave that up to you. I'm going to create another uh, uh, string and I'm going to uh, say Kiwi. Let's run this. So we have one K, two I's, and one W. That's it for question number four. Moving on to question number five. It says, reverse a given string. Very simple stuff. So, pause the video. After three seconds, you're going to see my solution. Let's just dive into the solution. I'm going to say the string is orange. Was it orange? Yeah. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say print original original string this is equal to the string that we have then I'm going to grab my string and I'm going to say string let's just reverse it right so for reversing we are just going to pass in the step as negative one and I'm going to say print reversed reversed string uh, this is equal to string itself right so let's just go ahead and test it out so original string is orange reverse string is ignato orange very cool that's it for question number five question number says says um, find the last position of a substring kelly in a given string last position where is the last position so here is this but find the last position Go ahead, pause the video, and you're going to see my solution after three seconds. So, how was the challenge? I'm sure you did great. Let's copy the string first to avoid typing it. And I'm going to say print, uh, let's say original string. No, I'm not, you know what? I'm not going to do that. So, the index, just provide some space there. The index is going to be stir.find, rfind, I'm going to use this function, rfind, and I'm going to pass in Kelly. Let's print the final occurrence of it, which is index, and it should be at the point 44. So you could go ahead and count it, uh, and it's going to be 44, right? That's question number six. Let's move on to question number seven. Question number seven says, 
split a given string on hyphens into several substrings and display each substring. Go ahead, pause the video. You're going to see my solution after three seconds. For this challenge, for this mini program, we are going to use the split function. So let's first copy the string itself. And I'm going to say substrings is equal to the string that we have dot split. What, is the, what do we want to split it on? It's, it's going to be a dash. It looks like smiley face, but it is not. So I'm going to say for sub and substrings, that's going to return a an iterable. What do I want to do? I just want to print these subs or substrings. What I what I could do was just provide this a little bit more meaningful. So I'm going to say for substring and substrings, provide I just print the substring. So we have Katie is a data scientist. Caddy. This is not Katie. This is Caddy. Uh, that's it for question number seven. Moving on to question number eight. It says remove empty strings from a list of strings. So how can we do that? That's up to you. After three seconds, you're going to see my solution. Well, let's just dive right into the solution. Uh, we have our string list. I'm just going to pass it right here. And I'm going to say new str list. This is equal to the, we are going to create a list from it. And then we are going to filter it, call the filter function. So we, are, we want to pick out the non-values. Uh, this is going to also filter the empty values for us as well. And I'm going to pass in the stir list. And finally, I just want to print the new string list. Let's run that. So we have Emma, John. Uh, this is JH. Let's just run it again. We have Emma, John, Kelly, and Eric. That's it for question number eight. Let's move on to the final question. So we have our string it says remove all characters other than integers from a string so go ahead pause the video you're going to see my solution after three seconds now uh, i'm going to copy this string first and then i'm going to say result is going to be equal to uh, we are going to join these but in the join, we are going to provide a list comprehension expression that is going to pluck out all of the uh, characters. And then we are going to grab the numbers. We're just going to need the numbers. So I'm going to say item for item in string if item is digit, right? Very cool. And that's it. That's the only thing that we needed to do. Just provided a condition. And let's print the result. And what do we have? We have 25 and we have 10. That's it for category 5 of many programs. We have had so much fun so far. And I'm sure you have learned a lot. And that's it for strings. We still have a lot more to do. We have a lot more challenges and many programs in front of us. And I hope, and I'm sure you're learning a lot. These are very necessary uh, mini programs and challenges that are going to prepare you for the upcoming chapters, upcoming sections, and upcoming um, projects, upcoming um, essential courses. So see you in the next category.